Hey guys how are all of you beautiful people hope all of you are doing fine. And yes this is the next part of Ben with Gwen. A story about how Ben and Gwen's relationship evolves over the next four years following their summer trip. So let's start without any delay let's start this great series. May, Year 4, Part 2 Gwen was tired walking into school the following day. After talking with Ben, there had been a lot on her mind, and it had kept her up at night. But now, she was trying not to focus on all of that. She was nearing the end of her last year of middle school, and she wanted to put an extra effort into her schoolwork before moving on to high school. When she got to her home room, Gwen sat down and took out her notebook to review her notes from the previous week. Before long, she was interrupted by someone stepping in front of her desk. Yo, classmate. Lucy said, smiling down at her. Gwen looked up. Seeing Lucy made her nervous at first. She was worried that their conversation from the other day would have an effect on her cousin, maybe even making things awkward between them. Luckily, things didn't seem that way. So Gwen managed to relax and smile back at her. Good morning, Lucy. You wanna go over the homework together? Lucy asked. Gwen eyed her suspiciously. Is that your way of asking, can I copy your answers to the homework? Lucy giggled, then playfully flicked Gwen's forehead. Nope. You're not the only good student in this school, you know. She pulled up her chair and sat down across from Gwen. When Lucy took out her notebook, Gwen was relieved to see she'd been telling the truth. All right, fine. You get a gold star today. Yeah. Their first few classes of the day were surprisingly pleasant. Lucy didn't seem awkward at all, and Gwen was beginning to think their earlier conversation really could be water under the bridge. They had separate classes right before lunch, so they parted on cheerful terms, intending to meet up again after class. By the time class was over, Gwen had stopped worrying about the situation altogether. However, on her way to lunch, something changed that. Gwen was walking down the hallway, expecting to meet Lucy in the lunchroom, but out of nowhere, she felt someone come up from behind her. Hello, Lucy shouted, pulling Gwen into a hug. This was something Lucy had done a million times before. Usually, Gwen would just shrug it off or laugh along with Lucy's antics. However, Gwen didn't do that this time. Instead, she tensed up, and without thinking, she grabbed Lucy's arms and shoved her off of her. There was an awkward pause. Gwen and Lucy stood apart from one another, staring motionlessly. Lucy wore an expression of shock. Gwen, too, was shocked by her own cold reaction, and looked at Lucy apologetically. Lucy, I Gwen began to say she was sorry. No no, I get it Lucy said, cutting her off. No worries. Come on, let's get some lunch. She smiled at Gwen and waved for her to come along, but she kept a safe distance. Lucy's concept of personal space was generally non-existent, so that made Gwen worry slightly. Why did I do that? Gwen's guilt set in as they walked the rest of the way to the cafeteria together. Lucy hugged her like that all the time, not to mention all the flirting and downright inappropriate touching. It had bothered her sometimes, sure. But it was never like what had just happened. For a brief moment back there, that was probably the most uncomfortable she'd ever been with Lucy. It's because I know now. Another girl having a crush on her was something Gwen had never experienced before, as far as she knew. She wasn't prepared for how it might affect her friendship with Lucy at all. And based on how quick Lucy was to drop the subject, that probably meant she could tell. The fact that Lucy must be feeling guilty about it now too made it even worse. 
However, as they stood in the lunch line, Lucy chatted away like nothing was wrong. Gwen tried to play along, but she knew everything she said must have sounded extremely forced. So, as soon as they got their lunches and sat down together at a secluded table, Gwen felt the need to apologize properly. Listen, Lucy, about that thing in the hallway earlier. Gwen said, managing to change the subject while Lucy paused to start eating. Lucy looked up at her uncertainly, but didn't interrupt her this time. I'm really sorry about that. I know it must be awkward for you too, so I just wanted to let you know I'm not weirded out by you or anything, I just sorta of reacted without thinking. Lucy smiled a little. It's fine. I know you're more used to guys being into you. Yeah, I guess. Gwen laughed a bit, embarrassed by Lucy's comment. Luckily, that made Lucy laugh too. There was another moment of silence as they both ate their lunches. After having some time to think, Gwen decided to come clean about something else while she was at it. I told Ben Gwen said quietly. Lucy nodded acceptingly. I figured. But that's good. Since you know, I think it's only fair he gets to know too. Gwen was relieved that Lucy wasn't upset. And don't worry, he's okay with it too. We're both willing to do whatever we can to make it up to you. No, no, really Lucy said, waving her hands dismissively. Please. You guys don't have anything to make up for. I'd feel a lot better if you two didn't worry about me at all. Gwen wasn't sure what to say to that. Maybe Ben was right. Ben's suggestion to just leave Lucy alone suddenly made a lot more sense to her. Maybe what Lucy was worried about the most was, strangely enough, them worrying about her. Well, all right. So since we're all cool, you wanna hang out with me and Ben after school? Gwen suggested. Lucy smiled gratefully. Sounds good. Later, at Ben's house, Gwen found it strange just how casual Ben and Lucy were acting. Ben had just found out that Lucy was basically in love with him, and Lucy knew that he knew, and yet they were acting like nothing had changed between them at all. As soon as Ben had opened the door to let them in, Lucy had tackled him in a hug, and he'd laughed it off like she was just her usual annoying self. Gwen was glad their method of dealing with it seemed to be working for them, but she was worried sweeping the problem under the rug for now would only make things worse later on. Now, the three of them were sitting on Ben's couch playing video games. It was as if they were just three friends hanging out not three cousins in a weird incestuous love triangle. Am I the only one who remembers what the hell's going on here? But Gwen's concerns did not appear to be shared by Ben and Lucy. Shoot those guys over there Ben commanded. You got it. Lucy agreed enthusiastically, mashing her controller and aiming in the general direction Ben had suggested. Okay, now get in the scorpion. Lucy looked at Ben questioningly. What? Ben asked. I know my English isn't perfect, but I think you just told me to get inside of a predatory desert arachnid Lucy said. The tank. Get in the tank. It's called a scorpion in this Ben explained. Lucy gasped. Oh, awesome. I get to blow stuff up. Lucy hurriedly moved her character over to the tank and got in. Ah ha ha ha. She laughed maniacally. Pants are for. Pants are for what? Ben asked, just as Lucy aimed the tank towards him and fired. Explosion. Na ha ha ha. Hey. Lucy, what was that for? Ben complained. Couldn't resist. Lucy admitted proudly, giving Ben a friendly punch to the shoulder. Gwen furrowed her brow at them. Seriously, how can they be so calm about all this? 
Gwen had to shut her mind up before she started feeling guilty again. If they were going to act like it was fine for now, maybe she could try to do the same for a bit. The game soon came to an end as Lucy blew everything up in a fiery explosion. Ha ha! Lucy cheered, jumping to her feet. Gut Jess Beelt. Quit speaking alien. Ben complained. I can't understand it anymore. Lucy giggled, falling back onto the couch. Then she gasped like she'd just remembered something. Ooh. Guess what? What? Ben asked. So, remember how Camille and Joel quit the plumbers? Gwen's heart sank a little. Last time they'd discussed that, Lucy had been very upset, feeling responsible for interrupting their lives. Yeah. Did something happen? Gwen asked cautiously. Well, I talked with them about it a little Lucy explained. And, well, it turns out they're still in contact with the plumbers. They plan to rejoin once I go off to college. She sounded very happy to be giving them that news. Gwen was a little surprised she was telling them about it at all. Lucy could be surprisingly secretive about her personal life. However, perhaps she had chosen to open up to them about this because they had already talked about it before and she wanted to let them know everything had turned out okay in the end. Well. That's great, Lucy. Gwen said encouragingly. Yeah, that's awesome. Ben said. So that's in like, what, four years? Lucy nodded, smiling happily. Mmm. -hmm. I'm so glad. I love them for taking time off to let me stay with them, but I'd love for them to go back to saving the world like they want to. How old do you have to be to join the plumbers? Ben asked. Gwen flinched, shooting a nervous gaze at him. What? Home. I dunno Lucy said. Why? You wanna join too? Yeah, totally. With a recommendation from them and from Grandpa, plus all the experience I have fighting aliens, I'm sure they'd let me in. Lucy giggled. Well, I'll let them know. Maybe in four years they can teach you everything you need to know. Gwen felt like a heavy weight was pressing down on her. What is he talking about? He wants to be a hero again. I thought we were past this. Sweet, thanks. Ben said. All right, so, what now? Gwen snapped out of it, remembering something she and Ben had agreed on earlier. We can deal with this later. Um she began, elbowing Ben's arm to get his attention. Lucy, Ben and I were going to ask you something. Oh yeah Ben said, nodding in agreement. Home. Lucy asked cocking her head to the side curiously. So, it's almost summer vacation. Ben and I were planning to go on a trip with our grandfather again Gwen said. A normal trip. With no Omnitrix. You wanna come with us? Ben asked. A wide smile crept across Lucy's face as she seemed momentarily stunned by the offer, then she broke out in squeals as she hopped up and down. Yes 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 yes. She shouted, leaping towards Ben and Gwen. Wrapping them both in her arms, she began rapidly kissing their faces. Whoa, whoa, hey now. Okay, ha ha, okay. Ben and Gwen struggled to push Lucy off of them, but she didn't seem bothered by it. Once she backed off, she spun around in place. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. It'll be just like two years ago. Me, you guys, Uncle Maximum. We'll drive around, fight crime, see some human monuments, eat more exotic food, all sorts of cool stuff. A thought crept across Gwen's mind. She glanced over at Ben, and sure enough, 
she caught him staring longingly at his wrist. Lucy seemed to think this summer would be just like their previous summers. Up until now, Ben probably hadn't really considered just how different things might be this time either. Lucy straightened up and stood back from them, putting her hands together in a grateful posture. Thank you. Really. This means a lot to me. Ben smiled. Don't sweat it. Things are always more fun when you're around. Gwen nodded in agreement. Well, she certainly makes things interesting. I just hope this is a good idea. So, I guess we'll see you again tomorrow. Gwen asked Lucy as Ben led them to his front door. Probably Lucy said. You wanna walk home with me? Or have you guys got some late night activities planned? She asked, giving them a coy smile. Gwen rolled her eyes. I actually will be staying a little longer, but not for the reason you're thinking of she assured her. Lucy snickered. Sure, sure, whatever you say. Lucy made a gesture like she was zipping her lips as she headed for the door. Well, night, guys. Good night, Lucy. See ya. Once they were alone, Ben and Gwen made their way back to the living room. That went pretty good Ben said, taking a seat on the couch. Pretty well Gwen corrected. But yeah. I'm glad she was so happy we invited her on the summer trip she said, sitting down beside him. For a moment, she considered whether or not to talk to him about how he said he wants to be a plumber. It won't come up for real until he graduates high school. He'll probably change his mind by then anyway. It seemed silly to make a big deal out of it now. And Ben would probably think she was being annoying by nagging him about it. However, she couldn't shake the awful feeling that was slowly creeping its way over her. Ben risking his life had been one of her biggest fears for such a long time and she thought he'd finally sworn off it when he'd given her the locket for their birthday. I can't just let this go. Gwen's expression hardened a little. Ben, do you really want to be a plumber when you grow up? Ben smirked. Well, I guess that depends what kind of plumber we're talking about. You know what I mean Gwen said, using a tone of voice which she hoped was serious but not harsh. Ben seemed to get the point. Well, well yeah. Like, it seems like the perfect job for me. I could follow in Grandpa's footsteps. Gwen didn't like that answer. She was hoping he'd say it was just something that had come to mind when Lucy mentioned it and not something he'd really thought about much. But I thought we gave up being heroes she said, her disappointment obvious in her voice. We did Ben agreed, holding up his left arm and turning it to show off his blank wrist. I'm not talking about single-handedly saving the world with alien superpowers, here. It'll be like being a cop. But like, a space cop. How is that any different? Gwen asked exasperatedly. I just said how. Ben was raising his voice now defending himself from Gwen's accusatory line of questioning. But you'll still be putting yourself in danger. Gwen insisted, standing up to yell at him. Whether or not you had superpowers was never the point. I know that Ben said, mimicking Gwen's movements and getting up from the couch as well. But if I do it the right way this time, it won't be nearly as dangerous. But why would you want to be in any danger? To help people, Gwen. It's what I want to do with my life. I thought you liked that about me. I do. I've always admired that about you. It's one of the reasons I fell in love with you in the first place. Ben opened his mouth to shout a response, but he stopped, confused. Right in the middle of their fight. She had shouted compliments at him instead of insults. 
His eyes darted back and forth like he was trying to figure out what the hell just happened. Gwen realized the absurdity of what she'd said to. Slowly, she began to laugh, and Ben joined in after a moment. They stood there, facing each other and chuckling for a few seconds. For some reason, Gwen stepped forward and pressed her forehead against Ben's. They stopped laughing and stared at each other happily. I'm such an idiot Gwen said quietly. I guess I am too Ben agreed. We still fight like this. I know. And we still make up. I know. Already, the idea of Ben joining the plumbers when he grew up was starting to seem like less of a bad idea to Gwen. He'd be an adult instead of a kid, he'd be more mature, trained, and experienced. And more importantly than any of that, it was his choice, and she wanted to support him, even if it scared her. You can join the plumbers if you want to Gwen said. Whatever you choose to do, I'll still love you. Her animosity completely forgotten, she leaned in closer and kissed him. Ben smiled and kissed her back. Out of nowhere, their eyes lit up with passion. It was several minutes later, with Ben and Gwen making out on the couch, when they heard the front door open. They stopped, momentarily pausing as the realization set in. Shit Ben said under his breath. His parents weren't supposed to be home for another hour. Panicking, he and Gwen scrambled to climb off of each other. In their haste, they fell off the couch, landing on top of each other once again. Luckily, they had a few seconds before Ben's parents rounded the corner. In that time, they managed to untangle themselves and get out of their compromising position, springing to their feet at the last second. Ben's parents smiled when they walked into the living room. Oh hello, Gwen. I didn't know you were over Ben's mom said. H hey, Aunt Sandra, Uncle Kyle Gwen stuttered out. Kyle looked back and forth between them. They were both flustered and out of breath, and Gwen was fixing her shirt. Everything all right, you two? He asked. Yeah. Yeah. We're fine, we're fine Ben said. He cleared his throat as he took a big step away from Gwen. What are you doing back so early? He asked. Oh, our friend had to cancel Sandra explained. Will you be staying for dinner, dear? She asked, turning to Gwen. Sure. I'd, I'd be glad to Gwen answered, avoiding eye contact with Ben. Great. Kyle said. Without much more small talk, Ben's parents walked away, giving Ben and Gwen another moment alone. Ben let out a deep breath. Fuck he said quietly. Yeah Gwen agreed, breathing heavily. That was way too close. We'll have to, pick that up later, I guess Ben suggested. Gwen looked at him questioningly for a moment. She looked even more freaked out about their latest close call than he was. However, a sultry smile slowly crept across her face as she nodded her agreement. So you never told us why you were so late yesterday, Christina Ally said. Across from her at the lunch table, Christina finished chewing before she spoke up. Oh yeah. My bad. My mom had to drop my brother off at karate before she brought me over. Your brother does karate? Ben asked, suddenly curious. Christina turned to him. Yeah, for a few years now. Started when he was nine. Where does he take classes? Ben asked. Christina looked up and to the side, thinking. I can't remember the name of the place right now. Why? You thinking of taking karate lessons? I would have thought you'd be more of a street brawler kinda guy, Ben Ally chimed in. No, no, my cousin does karate. She's a black belt. I was just curious if they went to the same place Ben explained. 
a black belt. Already. Christina sounded impressed. Damn. I knew that girl had game ally said. Julie perked up a bit at the mention of Ben's cousin. Hey, speaking of your cousin, don't think we've forgotten your promise. Ben looked at her questioningly. Promise. When we bumped into you and your cousin at the boardwalk, remember? You said we could all hang out sometime. We wanna see more of the famous Gwen Julie explained. She's not that great Ben said, waving his hand dismissively. Ally and Christina giggled a little while Julie just smiled at him skeptically. What? Ben asked, getting embarrassed. Regardless, let's all get together sometime this week Julie suggested. Hmm. Well, me, Gwen, and Lucy were gonna go out for pizza and then go see Civil War this weekend Ben said. You guys wanna come along? Oh hell yeah. Ally agreed. I've been wanting to see that. Okay Christina said. As long as they're fine with it Julie said. We don't want to intrude. No it's cool Ben assured her. They won't mind. Lucy probably wants to meet you guys too anyway. You're mad at me. No, I'm not Gwen rebutted. Walking together, Ben must have noticed the look on Gwen's face. Not to mention the cold attitude she'd had ever since he told her he'd invited Julie and her friends. Yes you are. No, I mean it. Gwen took a breath, catching herself on the verge of snapping at him. Look, I'm trying to be reasonable about this. I was the one who agreed when Julie suggested we all hang out sometime in the first place Gwen said, referring to the time they bumped into Julie at the boardwalk. So it's not you. It's just. You don't like Julie Ben said. That's not it. Gwen denied. She seems really nice. And she was good to you. Gwen lowered her voice. I just, don't like being reminded of being separated from you. Ben Speed walked to catch up with Gwen, stepping in front of her and turning around to stop her in her tracks. What are you? He put his hands on her shoulders, then moved in to kiss her. Gwen made a noise in surprise, then closed her eyes. After a moment, Ben pulled back. We're not separated anymore he reminded her. You have nothing to worry about with Julie. Gwen stared at him in surprise. Her heart was beating like crazy. She wanted to say something to thank him, but her embarrassment got the better of her. You you, doofus. She lightly smacked him on the shoulder as she stepped back, covering her red face. You can't just be romantic and cool like that out of nowhere. We're in public. Ben looked around real quick, but the street they were walking down was deserted. He laughed lightly. All right, all right, my bad. But it's okay, no one saw. I'm serious Gwen said, stepping in real close so she could speak quietly. We've already had a close call with these people. Not to mention the close call with your parents the other day. We need to be more discreet. I got it, I got it Ben assured her, taking a step back and waving his hands. Well, okay. Good. Let's just try to get through this without any more slip-ups. Gwen marched past him towards the pizza place. If only we didn't have to hide it. It was a thought Gwen had been having a lot recently, and she was certain Ben felt the same. It would be nice to be able to hang out with friends aside from Lucy without having to worry about what they did in front of them. When they arrived at the pizza place, they saw they were the last ones to get there. Lucy had already gotten a table with Julie, Ally, and Christina and she appeared to be regaling the others with some funny story of hers because they were listening intently and laughing along with her. Ben was sure none of them had ever met Lucy before, 
but she looked like she was already their best friend. Gwen was trying to hide it, but she felt anxious. Just as she'd told Ben, she didn't doubt that his friends from school were good people, but the fear of getting found out was always worse when they were around others. It'll be fine Ben told her, reaching out and squeezing her hand. You'll love them once you get to know them. Gwen nodded, giving him an appreciative look. Just before she started walking to the table, she saw Ally turn her head towards them. Gwen pulled her hand away from Ben's as soon as she made eye contact with the other girl. She felt a brief surge of panic, but luckily, Ally didn't seem to notice. She turned back to the rest of the table and announced that Ben was here. Eh? Lucy said, clapping her hands together. Ben. Gwen. Get over here. Okay, okay, sure. Gwen said as she and Ben made their way over to the others, shushing Lucy since she was being awfully loud for a public setting. At the table, they sat down next to each other, with Julie on Ben's right and Lucy on Gwen's left. Glad you could make it, Gwen Julie said to her. Gwen smiled. Yeah. No problem. Ben, you wanna introduce everybody? Julie suggested. Home. Why? Seems like everyone's already met. Just do it, Doofus Gwen said. All right, geez. The rest of the table giggled. Okay, well, ah, uh, Gwen, Lucy, these are my friends from school, Julie, Ally, and Christina Ben said, gesturing towards his right. And you guys, these are my cousins, Gwen and Lucy he finished gesturing to his left. They're cousins. I'm their second cousin-in-law, once removed, actually Lucy corrected, raising her index finger like a teacher. Don't get all technical on me. I don't need a second Gwen in my life Ben said. Yeah, you wouldn't want two people around to make you look like an idiot all the time Gwen quipped. Lucy and her friends laughed at this exchange. You two are definitely related Ally said. Unfortunately Ben and Gwen said in unison. This only made the rest of the table laugh harder, while Ben and Gwen shot each other a glare and tried not to look embarrassed. Well, at least our inability to stand each other will keep them from realizing we're dating. Gwen smiled at that thought as she turned away from Ben. It was kind of funny how easy it could be to hide that part of their relationship sometimes, while seemingly impossible at others. Soon after the laughter died down, the six of them ordered their pizza and began chatting amongst themselves as they waited. Hey Ben Ally said, getting Ben's attention. Yeah. Ben asked. Ally briefly glanced around the table. Don't you have any guy friends? Lucy snapped her fingers and pointed at Ally. That's what I said. Ben smiled smugly, but before he could say anything, Gwen kicked his leg under the table. He grunted in surprise, but decided not to make whatever joke he was about to make. That's okay, Ben Julie said, patting him on the shoulder. I'm sure the other guys are just intimidated by how in touch you are with your feminine side she said teasingly. Hey, now. I'm plenty manly Ben argued. Yeah, that's the manliest necklace I've ever seen. Christina joked. Everyone except Ben and Gwen laughed at that. Ben's necklace was partially visible around his neck, so he grabbed his collar and adjusted his shirt to hide it. Gwen's wasn't visible, but she did the same thing just in case. She didn't want another incident like she'd had with Emily. Lucy made eye contact with her, and she did her best to let her know not to show hers off either. Lucy seemed to get the message and gave her a mildly disappointed nod. A buzzing from below the table interrupted the conversation. Julie reached into the pocket of her hoodie and pulled out her phone. 
Oh. Excuse me for one second. She stood up and moved over to the empty table beside them, beginning to speak into her phone in Japanese. Why do you wear that necklace if you're just gonna cover it up with your shirt? Ally asked. Or is it one of those things that tells paramedics what medicines you're allergic to or something? Ah, uh, yeah, let's go with that Ben said, hoping to dodge the question. Well of course Gwen stepped in. You didn't think this visual train wreck had any sense of fashion, did you? Ally and Christina laughed at Gwen's jab. Ben looked annoyed, but Gwen could tell he knew she'd only said that to distract them from getting more curious about their lockets. Turning to her other side, Gwen noticed Lucy beside her. She hadn't laughed at Gwen's joke. Instead, her focus was on Julie and she looked like she was trying to listen to what she was saying. However, Julie still wasn't speaking English. Does she have a translator on her or something? Gwen considered that, but from what she knew about that kind of alien technology, it affected everyone in the area. Since she wasn't able to understand Julie right now, that couldn't have been it. Someone at the front of the restaurant called out their order number. Hey, that's us. Christina said, hopping up to go get it with Ally following her. Having a moment to themselves, Ben and Gwen leaned in close. You okay? Ben asked. Gwen cracked a smile. You kidding? These girls like hearing you get insulted as much as I do. I could do this all night. Cool. But please don't. Ben seemed somewhat relieved that Gwen's earlier trepidation had passed, although he probably wasn't too happy about why. But, ah, uh, maybe next time we should leave our lockets at home he suggested. Gwen blushed, putting her hand over her chest where her locket was. No. I want to wear it. Ben looked at her skeptically, but he nodded. All right. Never mind, then. I'll keep mine on too. Gwen smiled. Thank you. Pizza time. Christina declared, approaching the table with Ally, each holding part of their order. Ben and Gwen jolted back in surprise. Whoa, my bad. Didn't mean to interrupt you guys Christina said. No. We just Gwen started to say something defensively, but luckily, Julie finished her call and returned to the table at that moment. Okay, sorry about that. Oh good, the pizza's ready. Julie said, sitting down in her chair. So what Anita Noah Tuzan Deshita? Lucy asked her. Julie looked at Lucy in surprise, and everyone else at the table just looked confused. Then Julie smiled. Yeah, that was my dad. Do you speak Japanese, Lucy? Hi. Och Deutsch, it you en peu de Francaise Lucy responded, switching from language to language. Julie clearly didn't understand all of what Lucy had said. Ah, uh, I think there was French in there too. Wow, that's impressive she said. Is everyone in your family multilingual? Ally asked them. No, Lucy just, travels a lot Ben said. And she loves foreign films Gwen added. Lucy grinned and shot them both a look that said nice one. Gwen tried to remember if she already knew that Lucy spoke other languages. She'd heard her say non-English phrases before, but never to the extent that made her fluency clear. I guess that's just another of Lucy's hidden talents. The rest of the meal went relatively smoothly. The more Gwen got to know Ben's friends, the less she was afraid of them. They really did seem like great people, and it made her happy to know Ben had some decent friends at school. Whereas she had Lucy and even Emily, there were times she was worried Ben had nobody, but that clearly was not the case. I'm glad his breakup with Julie didn't ruin that. 
Gwen furrowed her brow. She usually tried not to think about anything to do with Ben's previous relationship with the other girl, even the breakup. It doesn't matter anyway. He's with me now. She smiled to herself, satisfied with that knowledge. All right, I'll go up and pay. Y'all can Venmo me after Lucy said, getting up from the table once they had all finished eating. Y'all. Ben said incredulously. Then he looked down as his phone suddenly began to vibrate. Who's that? Gwen asked. Just my mom he said, looking at the screen. I'll meet you guys outside. Gwen nodded and turned back to the others at the table just in time to see Ally and Christina getting up as well. I'm going to the bathroom. Be right back. Me too. Suddenly, Gwen found herself alone at the table with Julie. Oh. She glanced at the other girl, wondering if she should feel awkward or not. This was her boyfriend's ex-girlfriend, but only she knew that. Julie probably had no reason to feel awkward around her. However, she was definitely looking at her strangely. What? Gwen asked after a moment of silence. So, how long has this been going on? Julie asked. Gwen felt panic shoot through her. Julie hadn't specified what she was talking about, and her tone of voice wasn't hostile at all, but somehow that question still managed to sound very accusatory. Stay calm. That could mean anything. How long has what been going on? She asked keeping her face as straight as possible. Julie lowered her eyelids, looking unamused. She said nothing, but the message was clear, you know what I mean. Gwen held her gaze, saying nothing either. Paralyzed with fear, she couldn't bring herself to confirm or deny anything. Julie sighed. Just, this wasn't going on while he and I were still together, was it? Gwen was still scared out of her mind, but now, she also felt a little bad too. Julie had clearly figured them out, but she didn't seem like she was going to do anything about it. She just wanted to know if she had been cheated on. Deciding there was no point in trying to deny her relationship with Ben, Gwen decided to answer truthfully, hoping that she could end this conversation by putting Julie's fears to rest. Almost imperceptibly, she shook her head, letting Julie know she and Ben hadn't done anything back when they were still dating. Julie nodded acceptingly. Okay. That's all I needed to know she said. Don't worry. I'm not gonna tell anyone. But, there's one more thing I want to say. Gwen braced herself for the worst. Should I not have done that? Should I have denied everything instead? What is she going to do? You know what you're doing is dangerous, right? Julie said. Still completely stone-faced, Gwen sat there looking at her, afraid to move or say anything in response. I just don't want to see Ben get hurt, okay? Please consider that. Gwen still didn't want to say anything, and luckily, she didn't have to. Just then, Lucy returned to the table. All right. Bill's taken care of. She glanced around the table, seeing only Gwen and Julie there. Where's everyone else? Ben's taking a call outside. And the others are in the bathroom. Should just be a minute Julie said, sounding as casual as ever. It was as if her one-on-one -on -one with Gwen had never taken place. I guess Luce is not the only good actor around here. I'm gonna go wait with Ben Gwen said, excusing herself from the table. She was glad Lucy had come back to rescue her, but now she just wanted to get away from Julie. Not only had that been the scariest, most uncomfortable moment she'd had since she and Ben had started dating but it got her thinking some other pretty worrisome thoughts as well. Julie knows. 
Emily and Mom probably know too. How many others have already figured it out? Gwen couldn't think about much else while she was watching the movie with the others. Being confronted by Julie like that had been a real shock to her system, and she had a lot to consider now. She's right. What we're doing is dangerous. Julie and Emily had both been kind enough to let things go, but there was no way they'd ever be as accepting of their relationship as Lucy was. Her mother seemed to have let the subject drop as well, but that was probably just because she had no real proof. One of these days, she was going to walk in on them, or overhear a sensitive conversation, or something else that would be a dead giveaway. And if it wasn't her, it would just be one of their other parents, or someone else who would tell them. What will happen to us then? The thought of being separated from Ben again, forcefully this time, terrified her. She was sitting next to Ben, and she wanted to do something with him for comfort. Grab his arm, hold his hand, anything really. But she couldn't. His friends were seated on the other side of her, and there was no way she was doing anything in front of them. She wished Lucy had chosen to sit between her and them so there was at least a bit of a buffer, but Lucy was sitting on the other side of Ben instead. Glancing over at Ben and Lucy, she saw Lucy was actually holding Ben's hand the way she wished she could right now. They'd been doing things like that the whole movie so far. Every time she looked over, Lucy would be whispering some funny comment into his ear or grabbing onto him for comfort during a sudden, loud burst of action on screen. Ben seemed alright with it, and Gwen started to feel like she was third wheeling with her own boyfriend. Things would be so much easier for them. Gwen hated that the thought even crossed her mind, but she knew it was true. Sure, it would be weird at first when other people found out, but Ben and Lucy weren't really related the same way they were. If she and him were dating, they could do it openly, without having to sneak around or worry about getting caught all the time. They go well together, too. She couldn't help herself from thinking that either. Ben and Lucy were both born troublemakers. They liked to play pranks. They didn't follow the rules, they could turn anything into a game, and they only got serious when they really needed to. Unlike her and Ben, they never really fought, and it seemed as thought they could always get along no matter what was happening. Not to mention Lucy was completely supportive of Ben's plans to join the plumbers when he grew up, while Gwen was only grudgingly going along with it because she wanted him to do what made him happy. Maybe he'd be happier with Lucy. Gwen froze. She wasn't paying attention to the movie at all at this point, completely absorbed by her own thoughts. The idea of Ben being with Lucy instead of her was devastating, but she couldn't stop herself from imagining it. Everything about it made too much sense. She was even in love with him, and Gwen had no doubt that Ben could learn to love the fun, sexy, enigmatic girl too if he was given the chance. Stop, 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 stop. Gwen shouted at herself in her mind. The logical part of herself couldn't deny any of it, but she was just now realizing these thoughts had driven her to the edge of tears. The idea of breaking up with Ben so he could be with Julie instead was almost as terrifying as their parents finding out about their relationship and ending it for them. Is there any way this ends with us together? That was great, huh? Lucy asked, skipping a little bit ahead of Ben and Gwen. What, the movie? Ben asked. All of it. Lucy said. Yeah, the movie. But also your friends from school. They seem like really nice people. Ben chuckled a little. Yeah. They're pretty cool. What did you think, Gwen? Lucy turned around and started walking backwards so she could face them. Gwen didn't realize Lucy was speaking to her at first. 
She was looking at the ground while she walked, completely unfocused. Yo, Dweeb Ben said, flicking Gwen's forehead. Ow. Hey, quit it. Gwen smacked Ben's hand away. Whoa Ben said, stepping away from her. Lucy giggled. She skipped back to the two of them and wrapped her arms around Gwen. What did you think of Ben's friends? She asked again. Gwen was a little uncomfortable to have Lucy clinging to her again, but she managed to avoid freaking out about it this time. She was more worried about what she should say about Ben's friends after her conversation with Julie. They were nice she said simply. Ben tilted his head and looked at her questioningly. For sure. And so pretty. Lucy let go of Gwen and twirled away from her. They'd come to the end of the sidewalk at an intersection, one way leading to Ben's part of town and the other way leading to Gwen and Lucy's. Welp, looks like this is where we split up. You coming with me, Gwen? Or you got more plans tonight with the boyfriend? Lucy asked with a wink. Gwen glared at her, blushing. She looked over at Ben, who seemed to be leaving it up to her. We really, really need to talk. I'll be staying at Ben's tonight, Gwen said. Lucy giggled. All right. Have fun, you crazy kids. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. That's really not much, Ben said. Lucy laughed as she skipped off down the other street. Ben and Gwen went the other way together. Gwen was walking a little ahead of Ben, her arms crossed defensively. Okay, what's up with you? Ben asked. He sounded irritated. Gwen turned to look at him, narrowing her eyes. Excuse me. You're clearly mad about something. Is it the same as earlier? Gwen looked ahead of her. No she said. Oh God, don't do that again. If you're mad at me, you have to. I don't want to fight with you. Gwen snapped. They both stopped in their tracks, a little stunned. Gwen lowered her gaze guiltily. Sorry she said, starting to walk again. It's okay. I'm sorry Ben said, following after her. But seriously, I wanna know what's wrong. Gwen rolled her eyes and sighed. Let's, let's just get to your house first. It was pretty late at night, but they were still in public. If they were gonna talk about everything that had been on her mind that day, she didn't want to do it somewhere that might draw attention to their secret relationship. When they got to Ben's house, they went inside and shut the door behind them. Your parents definitely aren't home, right? Gwen asked for confirmation. Yeah, they're gone tonight Ben told her. Let's go up to your room Gwen suggested, still preferring the privacy of it. Ben's eyes went wide. Wait, you mean? Not for that. Gwen clarified. Ben put his hands up. Right. I knew that. Gwen sighed angrily. Just come on. She led Ben up the stairs to his room. As Ben closed the door behind them, Gwen walked into the middle of the room and stood there, arms crossed defensively again. So, what did you want to talk about? Ben asked. Gwen stood still for a minute. There was so much on her mind. She didn't even know where to begin. A lot. Sounds like you Ben quipped. Gwen pursed her lips. She really wasn't in the mood for their usual banter. Ben, can this really work? Ben paused for a moment, but he seemed to get the picture. You're talking about us, right? Yes. I am. Then of course it can. Gwen was somewhat pleased to hear him say that with such confidence, but that didn't matter much at the moment. I'm not so sure anymore. A look of fear came across Ben's face. What? 
Why not? What did I do? N no, no, no. Gwen said hurriedly. It's not about something you did, it's, it's just. Ben took a step closer. Gwen, tell me what's wrong. I, it's the, we. Gwen struggled to find the right words. Everything. Everything is wrong. Lucy, Julie, your future, there's just so much wrong right now. I just, how, how can we even do this? She let out, the stress and fear she'd been feeling lately becoming clear in her panicked voice. Whoa, whoa, whoa Ben said, waving his hands. What? Hang on. Lucy. Julie. My future. You mean about me becoming a plumber? I thought you were fine with it. Gwen averted her gaze guiltily. I am. But, only because it's what you want. I would never want you to keep putting yourself in danger if it were up to me. It was nothing she hadn't told him before, so he didn't seem to feel the need to press that issue any further. Well, okay, fine. What about Julie? I thought you said you liked her. Ben, she knows Gwen admitted. Ben looked stunned. She, she knows. About us. Gwen nodded. How? I don't know. She just figured it out, I guess. And that's the point. We can't keep this a secret forever. People can tell we're dating no matter how much we try to hide it. Well does anyone else know? A few. Fuck Ben said scathingly under his breath, balling up his fists in anger. He exhaled as he relaxed a little. Okay, who else knows? Emily. Your friend from school. Yes. She saw the picture in my locket, and she didn't say anything about it, but I think she at least suspects us. Okay, okay. Ben put his hand to his forehead, looking like he was trying hard to work this out. Well, neither of them are gonna say anything, right? Gwen shook her head. Julie told me she wouldn't. And Emily was quick to drop the subject. Okay. Okay, good. Anyone else? Gwen froze as the last person who she thought was suspicious of them came to mind. Gwen. I think my mom can tell something's going on. Ben put his hands together like he was praying. Please no. She will literally kill me. She didn't say anything directly but. Gwen trailed off. Her mother was probably the worst person who could find out about their relationship, and even thinking about her catching them was making her worry even more. Damn it Ben swore. Okay, well, we just need to be extra careful around our parents from now on, right? We can handle it as long as they don't ever catch us. Gwen was skeptical. She knew how smart her mother was. It would only be a matter of time before she found out one way or another. All right Ben went on. So, what about Lucy? You said something was wrong with her too. She's still in love with us, remember? Gwen reminded him, speaking as if he was being an idiot for forgetting. I know that, Gwen he said. But we're already handling that, remember? Gwen took a deep breath. The next thing she was going to say was going to be difficult. Ben, have you ever thought about being with her instead? What? Ben asked as if she'd just said something truly ridiculous. Ben, I'm serious. Gwen insisted. Think about it. She loves you. You get along great with her, she's funny, and beautiful, and kind, and most of all, you wouldn't have to hide it. If you two were together instead, it would solve everything. That makes no sense, and you know it Ben said forcefully. That wouldn't solve anything because we wouldn't be together anymore. 
Gwen froze as the implications of what she was suggesting finally dawned on her. Not together anymore. Ben seemed to get it too. Wait, is that, are you breaking up with me? No. Gwen denied immediately, but she knew that really was what she was suggesting. I, I don't know. Maybe we should. Gwen, we just started dating. And we've already been caught. Gwen reminded him. Ben opened his mouth to speak, but no words came out. He put his hand over his face as he tried to think of another argument. Don't do this. This is so stupid. It's not stupid Gwen insisted. We can't make this work. Not forever. Well I don't accept that. Ben shouted. Fine Gwen said. We're not breaking up yet. We'll talk about this later. She could tell she wasn't going to get through to him tonight, so she turned and headed for the door. Gwen. Where are you going? Ben asked as she stepped out into the hall. Gwen, get back here. Before she knew what she was doing, Gwen turned back to him and thrust out her hand, telekinetically shoving him. He flew back and hit the wall, grunting in pain. Ow. She felt pain surge through her body as well. It had been a long time since she'd last used her magic, and she didn't have the charm of Bizzle with her this time. She'd done it without thinking, lashing out at him in her anger at the whole situation, and she immediately regretted doing it. Ashamed of herself, she slammed the door and ran out of Ben's house. I've made a huge mistake. August, Year Zero Oh, this is so exciting. Lucy said, hopping up and down, already in her human form as the ship entered Earth's atmosphere. Be still, child the large sludge monster to her side said. You'll crash the ship if you keep jumping like that. Lucy landed on her feet and pivoted in place. What's your human form gonna look like, auntie? She asked hands clasped behind her back innocently. I think you'd look so pretty with hair like your daughter's. Ooh. She's gonna look beautiful in a wedding dress. Oh, I can't wait. Ah. Uh. The other huge, hulking, purple monster in the room sighed in annoyance. Why did we have to bring your sister's brat? Because I'm just so cute. Lucy said turning to her uncle. She giggled and smiled brightly at him. She knew he'd just insulted her, but she was in way too good of a mood to care. Are we there yet? No. Quit asking. Her uncle said. Why don't you ask the one actually flying this thing? Go bother him. Lucy giggled. Okay. She pivoted gracefully then skipped over to the door. It opened automatically, allowing her to exit the room and head for the cockpit. Another Len open, also still in his natural form, sat at the ship's controls. He didn't look up as Lucy entered, staying completely focused on his task. Mr. Bodyguard. Lucy said cheerily, not knowing the man's actual name. She'd asked him earlier but he hadn't answered her. Hey. It's me. Look over here. The Len open did not turn his head, so Lucy came up beside his large pilot's seat. Hey. Come on, I know the landing process is pretty much all autopilot. Finally, her aunt and uncle's bodyguard slowly turned his head to look at her. He wore the same expression as always so Lucy couldn't tell if he was annoyed or not. Are we almost there? Lucy asked. The bodyguard nodded. Eh. I'm gonna see Camille soon. After doing a little twirl to celebrate, Lucy turned back towards the bodyguard and leaned in closer. What's your human form gonna look like? The other Len open had no answer for her. Instead, 
he continued to simply watch her with an unchanging expression on his face. Ooh. I know. Lucy said, pulling out the cell phone Camille had given her. She had a bunch of pictures of humans on it, some taken when she was on Earth and some taken of her TV screen. Quickly, she flipped through them until she found the one she was looking for. This. She said, thrusting the phone at the pilot. The picture she'd chosen was of a tall, good-looking man in a dark suit, standing with his hands behind his back and a stern expression on his face. This is what bodyguards look like on Earth. The bodyguard looked at the picture for a moment, then turned his chair towards her. Lucy took a step back, worried for a second that she had annoyed him too much and he was gonna toss her out of the cockpit. Instead, he stood up and began to shrink, compressing his len open form in order to shapeshift. Ooh 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 ooh. Lucy said in awe. The bodyguard now stood in front of her as an exact duplicate of the man in the photo. You look handsome. The bodyguard simply nodded and sat back down, turning back to the ship's controls. I'm a go get ready for landing. Bye. Lucy skipped back out of the room, humming cheerfully to herself. This is gonna be great. Lucy was waiting by the exit before the ship even landed. Getting to see her cousin again was the most exciting thing in the world to her right now, and she wasn't gonna let anything delay her any longer than necessary. Once they had touched down, the door opened and the landing ramp began to extend, but it didn't even make halfway down before Lucy ran down it and jumped off, landing with a roll in the grass below. Woo! She cheered as she stood up. Looking around. She saw other alien ships landing in the area and a few buildings at the other end of the field. Standing outside of them were several humans, although some of them were probably aliens in disguise like her. After scanning those in sight, Lucy spotted two people she recognized, Camille and her fiancé Joel. She gasped excitedly, and without another moment's hesitation, she began sprinting towards them. Camille. Camille. Joel. Camille. Lucy called out to them as she ran. When they heard her, they walked a little closer and waved at her. In seconds, she had reached them, slamming into Camille and wrapping her arms around her waist. Camille, Camille, Camille. Lucy. I'm so glad you could make it, sweetie Camille greeted her little cousin returning the hug and lovingly stroking her hair. Ooh 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 it's so good to see you. Lucy said, taking a step back and turning to Camille's fiancé. Joel. She shouted, leaping at him too. Oh. Joel said in surprise as Lucy suddenly clung to him. Well hey, kid he said, patting her on the head. It's been a while. Good to see you. I know. Lucy said, stepping back and bouncing up and down. I'm here. On Earth. Again. For your wedding. She squealed in excitement. This is gonna be the best. I can't wait for all the cake, and the wine, and the dancing, and the flowers, and the music, and the pretty dresses, and Joel's fourth evil identical septuplet objecting to the ceremony and the fight, and the dramatic declaration of love, and the kiss at the end, and the awe. Joel chuckled. Wow, you really have been letting her watch too much television. Lucy gasped and turned to Camille again. Look. She said, taking her universal translator out of her pocket and holding it up to show her. Look. It's off. Listen. I'm really speaking English right now. Isn't that great? Wow, Lucy. Congratulations. Camille sounded impressed with Lucy's fluency, especially given her age and how little English she spoke just a couple years ago. 
Although I suppose most of the other aliens at the wedding will have their translators on anyway, Joel pointed out. Still though, Lucy said, as excited as ever. I watch your movies without a translator now. And I can live on Earth and talk to humans without one. It's perfect. I can't wait. As the three of them were talking, three other humans had been approaching them from the direction Lucy had come from. However, Lucy noticed that one of them was the human form she had convinced the bodyguard to take, which meant the other two humans must have been disguised Len Opens as well. Look, Camille. Your parents are here too. Camille and Joel looked in the direction Lucy was pointing. Oh, that's them. She asked, having never seen them as humans before. Sure was nice of them to agree to bring your little cousin with them Joel said, ruffling Lucy's hair. I still can't believe they changed their minds Camille said. My parents and Lucy's were also against the whole thing at first. Although, I feel bad for your uncle's granddaughter now. She wasn't looking forward to being the flower girl too much, was she? Nah, I'm sure she'll be fine. Gwen's always been a bit of a tomboy anyway Joel said. Now, my parents can be a little rough around the edges, but try not to be afraid of them. I'm sure they wouldn't do anything to hurt anyone at their own daughter's wedding. Joel laughed. No worries. I've faced tougher aliens than them before. Besides, I could say the same about my parents. After making their way across the field, Camille's parents stood across from them with their bodyguard standing off to their side. Mom, Dad. Camille greeted them with a smile. I'm so glad you came. And thanks again for bringing Lucy. You are welcome, my dear her father said politely, although his tone made it clear he still wasn't very happy with the circumstances. Congratulations on your betrothment her mother said. The bodyguard said nothing, but he stared at Joel somewhat menacingly. Well, it's, ah, uh, very nice to meet you Joel said, nervously taking a step forward and extending a hand to Camille's parents. I'm Joel Tennyson, your daughter's fiancé. The bodyguard stepped forward and put himself between them. I guess you're not big on handshakes where you come from. Great Joel said, stepping back. Lucy giggled and hopped forward to take his place. Here, like this. She reached forward and grabbed the bodyguard's arm. Without any resistance, he let her extend it and put her hand in his. Business, business, business Lucy said jokingly lowering her voice and putting on a fake serious face as she shook the man's hand. The bodyguard said nothing. His eyes flickered between Lucy and Joel, which was probably the most confusion he was willing to express. Very well. Camille's father stepped past his bodyguard and held out his hand as Joel had done. Joel shook the man's hand. Mr. Man, might I say? You have raised a fine young woman. Camille's father actually cracked a smile. H.M. I like him he said, turning to his wife. Agreed Mrs. Mann said, shaking Joel's hand next. So long as you take care of our daughter. Of course Joel said confidently. Despite her earlier excitement, Lucy watched the scene in front of her cautiously. Things seemed to be going better than her cousin had expected, but there was something in the way her aunt and uncle spoke that seemed inauthentic. She knew how much her family normally hated humans, and she was beginning to worry something bad might happen. Reflexively, she stepped closer to Camille, gripping her cousin's pant leg for security. Camille looked down and put her arm around Lucy reassuringly. Mom. Dad, how about we show you around the resort? The wedding's not for a few days, and there's so much to enjoy on this planet. Camille's parents nodded. Together with their bodyguard, 
Joel led them away towards the main building. Don't worry Camille said quietly to Lucy. I won't let anything ruin my wedding. After hearing Camille's words, a smile lit up across Lucy's face. Okay. Over the next couple of days, many more of the bride and groom's friends and family arrived. The day before the wedding, Joel and Camille planned to have dinner with both their parents. As Joel, Camille, and Lucy approached the dining hall, Joel put his hand on Lucy's shoulder. Lucy, my Uncle Max arrived yesterday. He brought two of his grandchildren. They're about your age. Would you like to meet them? He offered. Lucy gasped excitedly. Can I? Can I? Sure. Joel said, opening the door to let Lucy and Camille step inside ahead of him. In the dining hall, Camille's parents were already seated with Joel's parents as well as another older man. Joel scanned the rest of the room. Several other guests were seated at different tables. Ah, there they are he said, pointing at a table with two children seated at it. Lucy grabbed Joel's hand. Eh. Come on. Let's go, let's go. Joel chuckled and turned to his fiancé. Camille, you go ahead and handle our parents. I'll be there in just a sec. Camille nodded with a smile. Have fun with your new friends, sweetie she said to Lucy. Joel and Lucy walked over to the kids' table. A brown-haired boy was slouching in his chair and a red-haired girl was leaning forward, resting the side of her face in her hand. They looked like they were arguing about something. Ben, Gwen Joel said, interrupting them. The two kids turned to give him their attention. This here is Camille's little cousin, Lucy. She'll be the flower girl at the wedding tomorrow he said, standing behind Lucy with his hands on her shoulders. Lucy, this is Gwen, my cousin Frank's daughter. He gestured to the red-haired girl as he spoke, then gestured to the brown-haired boy. And this is Ben, my cousin Kyle's son. He'll be the ring bearer tomorrow. Ben groaned and buried his face in his arms. Don't remind me. Ha, ha Gwen laughed tauntingly as she got up from the table and stepped over to them. Hi, Lucy. It's a pleasure to meet you she said earnestly, holding out her hand. Hi. Lucy said, grasping Gwen's hand and shaking vigorously. You and I are gonna be friends. She declared. Gwen was startled, but she didn't complain. After she was finished introducing herself, she glanced over at Ben who was still burying his face in his arms. Hey, doofus. Where are your manners? Cram it, dweeb Ben said, looking up. Hi there he said with a small wave at Lucy. That little exchange made Lucy laugh, and she waved back happily. Joel chuckled. All right, then. I'll leave you kids alone he said, heading over to the larger table. Enjoy your dinner. Ben leaned back in his chair and started slouching again. Gwen scoffed at him and sat back down. I'm so excited about being the flower girl. Lucy said, cupping her hands together cutely. Do you know we get to dance in front of everyone? Isn't that great? She asked Ben, leaning forward expectantly. Ben rolled his eyes. Yeah, great he said, his words dripping with sarcasm. Lucy giggled, then turned and leapt into the air before running off to grab some food from the buffet table. They're funny. She'd seen other kids walking around the city she visited with Camille last time she was on Earth, but this was her first time actually talking to humans her own age. She couldn't wait to get to know them better. They were gonna be her very first Earth friends, and the prospect had her very excited. The buffet table was only a short distance from where Ben and Gwen were sitting, 
so Lucy decided to eavesdrop a bit while she was loading her plate with earth food. Ben lowered his head down onto the table, covering it with his hands. I should just let you squirm, Gwen said. But I took Cotillion for three years, she said, somewhat reluctantly. Ben looked up at her in confusion. Cotillion. Gwen repeated, as if she couldn't believe he didn't know what it was. It means ah, uh, never mind she said exasperatedly, shaking her head and holding her hands out in surrender. I know how to dance. I can teach you. Yeah, I'll think about it Ben said sarcastically, pointing at her. Then he swiped his hand through the air. Not. He shouted, glaring at her. Gwen just narrowed her eyes and shook her head disapprovingly. Lucy laughed at their little fight as she watched from a distance, but she also found herself staring at them both dreamily. The boy, Ben, was really cute. She thought his lazy bedhead hair looked good on him, and he had the coolest looking device she'd ever seen on his wrist. At first she thought it was just a watch, but it looked nothing like she'd seen in any of the Earth television she'd watched, outside of SCI fi stuff. She made a mental note to ask him about it later. The girl, Gwen, was absolutely gorgeous. From what Lucy had seen of humans, red hair like hers was extremely rare. And she wore it shorter than most girls, which made it even more unique. Compared to Ben, it was clear that she was the more mature and refined one, and that gave her an air of elegance and beauty in Lucy's eyes. Not to mention the little cat face on her shirt was adorable. What stuck out most about them, though, was the way they interacted with one another. They acted like they couldn't stand each other, but at the same time, Lucy got the sense that they cared about each other more than they let on. Here they were in this huge dining hall with plenty of empty tables and other people to talk to, but instead they chose to sit together. They seemed to be fighting, but one of them was still offering to help the other. They seemed to know each other very well, and they were probably a lot closer than they'd care to admit. Seems like they got a bit of a double sun thing going. Lucy snickered to herself at the thought. I think I'm gonna like them. Lucy was hoping she would get to spend more time with Ben and Gwen so she could get to know them better, but things got kind of out of hand after one of the chefs turned out to be Camille's ex-boyfriend in disguise. He tried to attack Joel, but luckily, a Petra Sapien showed up to protect him. The odd thing was, the Petra Sapien had a symbol on his clothing that matched the symbol on Ben's weird watch thing, and Ben was nowhere to be found during the commotion. Is Ben a Petra Sapien in disguise? That didn't make any sense. Petra Sapiens couldn't shapeshift the way Len Opens could. Plus, Joel said Ben was a relative of his, and Joel was definitely human. A better explanation would be the device on Ben's arm allowed him to shapeshift, and not just by appearance. Whatever it was, that technology was far beyond either of their species. This made Lucy extremely curious about these humans, and she wanted to find out more about them. She heard from Joel that Ben and Gwen were staying with his Uncle Max in an RV parked outside the resort. So that night, Lucy borrowed a pair of high-tech plumber binoculars from Joel and went to check them out. As she approached the RV, she heard music coming from inside. She thought that was kind of odd, so she went around back to peek through the window. It's a little too high. I could stretch up to the window, but they might see me. Checking her surroundings. She decided that the roof of the building beside the RV would give her a good enough angle to see inside, so she stretched her way to the top. From her perch, she looked through her binoculars and could see Ben through the window of the RV. Perfect. Surrender your secrets to Lucy, mortal. Ben was alone. 
There was some sort of mat on the floor with pictures of footprints on it, and Ben was stepping on them. He seemed to be trying to keep up with the rhythm of the music. Lucy giggled. He looks funny. It was difficult to hear clearly through the window and over the music, but after a few moments, she heard Gwen's voice. You look like your underwear is too tight, Gwen said. Just then, Ben lost his balance and fell over. Lucy hoped they couldn't hear her laughter. Ha, very funny. Now buzz off. Ben said, getting back on his feet and shooing Gwen away. You trust me to help kick alien butt. Why won't you trust me to teach you how to dance? Gwen asked. The music stopped as Gwen was talking, so Lucy could hear them a lot better now. So that Petra Sapien really was Ben, then. Lucy wondered if Ben and Gwen were plumbers in training or something. It sounded like they'd already fought aliens together many times before. Cause, you're probably just gonna trick me into looking like some dancing doofus. Ben declared turning his back to Gwen and crossing his arms defiantly. You don't need my help to dance like a doofus Gwen said, stepping into Lucy's view through the window. So get over yourself. And give me your hands. Gwen held out both arms, offering her hands to her cousin. Ben turned towards Gwen and hung his head miserably, looking up at her with puppy dog eyes. Oh my god he's cute. Lucy smiled broadly as she watched through the binoculars. She may not be able to learn the secrets of Ben's watch this way, but perhaps she could discover something far more interesting. Reluctantly, Ben placed his hands in Gwen's. They stood facing each other for a moment before Gwen pulled Ben's left hand to her waist. Most important thing, is don't step on her toes Gwen said smiling tauntingly as she placed her right hand on Ben's left shoulder. Lucy let out an excited little gasp when she realized she was the her Gwen was referring to. Ah, this is so gross Ben said, trying to avoid eye contact with Gwen, whose face was now very close to his. Like I don't know that. Now just count Gwen said. Together, they began to step back and forth. One, two. One, two. Forward, back. Forward, back Gwen instructed. As Lucy watched from her perch, a wave of strong emotions swept over her. She wasn't exactly sure what she was seeing. So far, she'd only met Ben and Gwen very briefly. From that little encounter, she'd managed to glean that the two of them were quite close. She knew they were cousins, and they'd probably known each other for a long time, possibly their whole lives. But as she watched the two of them dancing together, she had a strong feeling that there was something more between them. A special connection. Perhaps they themselves hadn't even realized it yet, but there had to be something there. She could feel it. Hey, I'm dancing. Ben said proudly. Oh, that is so sweet. A third, deeper voice came from inside the RV. Lucy had been so distracted, she hadn't heard the RV's door open and close as another person came in. And from the looks of it, neither had they. Grandpa. Ben and Gwen shouted in unison. They stared, mouth agape, before Ben decided to shove Gwen away from him and turn away, crossing his arms. Ow. Gwen complained as she went crashing to the floor. Lucy doubled over in laughter. Apparently, the two of them were much too embarrassed to be friendly with each other in front of their grandfather. In Lucy's mind, this confirmed that their bickering was just a front to hide their true feelings for each other. Before we know it, we'll all be right back here for their wedding. The wedding was the craziest thing Lucy had ever experienced. Camille's parents and their bodyguard went crazy and attacked everyone, but Camille, Joel's parents, his uncle Max, Ben, 
and Gwen managed to fight them off. And afterwards, standing in the smoking rubble of the aftermath, Joel and Camille stood at the altar and were married all the same. It was beautiful. At the reception, Lucy couldn't wait to dance with Ben. As soon as the music started, she skipped over to where Ben and Gwen were predictably sitting together. Hey there, heroes. She greeted them. When Ben saw her, he flinched, looking her up and down quickly before averting his gaze. Lucy smiled. Guess that means I look pretty good in this dress. Lucy turned to Gwen. You look so beautiful. She said to her genuinely. Gwen smiled a little shyly, like she wasn't used to compliments or looking this fancy. Thanks, Lucy. You do too. Thanks. Lucy stood up straight, looking a little more serious. You guys were amazing back there. You saved my cousin's wedding. I don't know how to thank you. You could, I dunno, let me not dance. Ben suggested. Lucy giggled. Not on your life, handsome. Grabbing him by the wrist, she lifted him to his feet. Ben groaned, but didn't resist. Mind if I borrow your gallant knight for a bit? She asked Gwen. Keep him Gwen said. Lucy smiled knowingly as she dragged Ben out onto the dance floor with her. Try not to get too jealous, sweetheart. As they danced, Lucy could clearly see Ben trying to put Gwen's dance lessons to good use. His lips actually moved a little as he said one, two. One, two to himself. She found it amusing. At one point, Lucy glanced back to where they'd left Gwen. When she saw Lucy look at her, Gwen turned her head, trying to pretend she wasn't watching them. Lucy smiled. I knew it. Turning back to Ben, she locked eyes with him. For a moment, they kept dancing like that, staring into each other's eyes with their faces quite close. Those emerald eyes of his are so gorgeous. Ben only held on so long before he blushed and averted his gaze. Lucy smirked, enjoying yet another wordless compliment from the cute earth boy. Then she remembered the advice Gwen had given him last night about not stepping on her toes, and it gave her an idea. Shape-shifting just her feet, she essentially let them melt, turning into a pool of purple sludge. As the pool expanded, it reached Ben's feet. Ha! Huh. Ben looked down, noticing he'd stepped in something, but it was too late. After taking another step, he slipped. Whoa! He called out as he fell to the floor. Lucy started laughing like crazy. As if sensing Ben's misfortune, Gwen jumped to her feet and grabbed her camera, immortalizing the moment with a picture. Nice one. Gwen complimented her, coming over to give Lucy a high five. Thanks. Ben groaned as he got back on his feet. Sorry, Ben. Couldn't help myself. Lucy apologized. Whatever Ben said, trying to downplay his embarrassment. Lucy looked back and forth between them. Gwen, would you like the next dance? She offered gesturing to Ben. The two of them looked confused. They did a double take as they seemed to figure out what she was saying at the same time. You. Gross. Ben and Gwen took a big step away from each other, causing Lucy to laugh at their embarrassment. She hung out with them for the rest of the reception. They had a lot of fun photobombing people together, eating enormous pieces of wedding cake and playing little pranks on each other. As the day came to a close, they took a moment to say goodbye to each other. It was very nice meeting you, Lucy Gwen said, holding out her hand. Oh come on, we're family now. Lucy said, brushing Gwen's hand aside and pulling her into a tight hug. Oh.
Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I guess we are Gwen said, returning the hug. Ben probably wasn't looking forward to it when Lucy turned to him for his turn, but he let her hug him too. Goodbye, Lucy he said. As she pulled away, Lucy gave Ben a quick kiss on the cheek. Whoa. Ben said, instantly turning red. Lucy giggled. You two are just too fun. I can't wait to see you again. After one last goodbye from everyone, Ben and Gwen left with their grandfather. Soon after, all the other guests left as well. At the end of the day, Lucy was left with Camille and Joel. Sounds like you got along pretty well with my cousin's kids, Joel commented. Mm hmm. Lucy nodded excitedly. I love them. Turning to Camille, she saw a strange look on her cousin's face. She was smiling, but Lucy could tell she needed to talk to her about something serious. Oh. Lucy realized what it was. So, what's gonna happen with your parents now? Lucy asked gently. They've been taken into plumber custody Camille explained. She sounded sad but not very surprised. More disappointed than anything. Oh Lucy said, looking down at the floor. So, what about me? She asked. After all, she was only here to visit for the wedding, and Camille's parents were supposed to be her ride back to their home planet. She looked back up when she felt Camille's hands on her shoulders. Well, I guess you're stuck here on Earth with us, huh? Camille said. Lucy's eyes went wide when she realized what her cousin was saying. You mean? Camille nodded. She glanced over at Joel, and he nodded his approval as well. Lucy took a deep breath, a huge smiling creeping across her face. Oh my gosh! She shouted, pulling Camille into a tight hug. Joel stepped over to them and joined in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lucy repeated, crying tears of joy. The three of them left the building together, with Lucy walking in the middle and holding hands with both of them. A limo Joel and Camille had hired was waiting for them, so they got in the back together and set off. As the limo pulled away, Lucy took out her camera and looked through the pictures she'd taken with it. A lot of them were of Ben and Gwen. She smiled to herself. Despite the act the two of them put on, they were smiling happily together in just about every shot. There's something special here. And since I'm staying, I'm gonna help them find it. June, Year 4 Ben stopped walking standing in place to watch as Lucy wandered off the side of the trail. A group of purple flowers seemed to have caught her eye, and she knelt down to examine them. I think I wore a flower like this in my hair at the wedding Lucy commented. Ben looked down at it. Joel and Camille's wedding. He asked. Mum Lucy nodded. It's still amazing to me. Nothing this beautiful grows on my planet, but it's everywhere here, in all shapes and sizes she said, looking around at all the other flowers growing throughout the park. Ben followed her gaze, quickly scanning his surroundings. On a bright, sunny day like this, there was no shortage of people outside. A few others were giving him and Lucy curious glances. To them. They definitely looked like a couple on a date. It almost felt like a date too, since Gwen wasn't there. Seeing Lucy kneeling there in her casual summer dress, smiling happily as she picked a flower and slipped it into her hair, Ben couldn't help but see Gwen's point. She looks like a goddamn Disney princess. Everything else Gwen had said about her came to mind, too. He could very easily see himself dating her, and he wouldn't even have to hide it. No. Don't even think about it. Ben frowned and mentally scolded himself. Even though it was Gwen's idea in the first place, and even after she'd physically assaulted him, 
he still felt guilty for thinking about Lucy that way. Pretty, right? Lucy said as she stood up. What? Ben asked, wondering once again if she could read his mind, but then he realized she was talking about the flower she'd placed in her hair. Oh. Yeah. It is. Lucy smiled and lightly brushed her hair with her hand. Thanks, she said. Clasping her arms behind her back, she started casually strolling along the trail again. Ben continued to observe her for a second, then walked quickly to catch up with her. She's so calm today. It was kind of throwing him off. More often than not, Lucy was hyperactive and silly, taking every opportunity to make jokes and tease him. But right now, she was acting dainty and gentle. Lucy tilted her head up at the sky. Ben. She asked. Yeah. Are you planning to make up with Gwen soon? Ben was caught off guard. It had been nearly two weeks since the incident, and Lucy hadn't asked him about it at all yet. He figured she was either trying her best not to pry, or Gwen had told her all about it already and asked her not to say anything to him. How much has Gwen told you? He asked her. Not much Lucy said. She said you had a fight. A big one. And she said she hit you. She hasn't been able to forgive herself for that. Ben didn't know what to say. When he thought about it, he probably wouldn't ever be able to forgive himself either if he ever hit her out of anger. The time he'd given her a black eye when they were sparring came to mind. That had been an accident, and even then it had taken him forever to get over it. She can't focus in school anymore Lucy went on. She never wants to hang out. And she never smiles. She only gets that way when she can't be with you. Stopping where she was, Lucy turned and locked eyes with Ben. She wasn't smiling, but she didn't look like she was scolding him or anything either. She only looked concerned. Have you talked to her at all since your fight? Ben hung his head, then shook it. No. Sorry. It's okay Lucy said. It's understandable that you'd be upset. Ben clenched his jaw. Even if he was a little disappointed in himself for letting their fight hang in the air for so long, he was still a little angry about it. Can you, tell me what it was about? Lucy asked hesitantly, like she was worried she was being nosy. A lot of things Ben said. The fight hadn't lasted very long, but Gwen had brought up so many issues. She doesn't want me to be a plumber when I grow up, for one. A look of understanding crossed Lucy's face. That makes sense. She doesn't like seeing you put yourself in danger. She sighed. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have told you about Joel and Camille's plans. I didn't mean to put the idea in your head. Ben furrowed his brow. Is she really trying to take the blame for this? And no, Lucy. It wasn't your fault. It's just what I wanted to do. Lucy nodded, but she didn't look like she accepted that. Besides, that was, like, the least of her concerns Ben went on. She was way more freaked out about the fact that other people are starting to catch on that we're Ben glanced around him. There were still plenty of other people in the park, and even if he didn't know any of them, he didn't want to say he and Gwen were dating out loud in front of anyone else. Gesturing to Lucy that they should keep going, he began walking towards the park exit. Lucy nodded, following along with him. It's Julie, isn't it? She asked. What? Ben asked before he realized what she meant. Oh. Well, yeah. Gwen said she figured it out somehow. Damn it Lucy said under her breath. I should have known. 
She was asking me a lot of questions about you two before you got there. I should have done a better job of throwing her off the trail, and... Lucy, no. Ben interrupted her. She's doing it again. It wasn't your fault. We bumped into her when we were on a date at the boardwalk. She probably figured it out then. Ben did another paranoid scan of his surroundings as he mentioned their date. They had exited the park at this point and there wasn't anyone else on this street, but he still felt nervous. Lucy still didn't look convinced that it wasn't her fault. Why did she hit you? She asked all of a sudden. You wanna know why she hit me? I'll tell ya why. She got mad because I wouldn't break up with her and date you instead Ben explained, his tone of voice make it very clear just how ridiculous he found the whole thing. Lucy stopped walking and turned to him with an extremely confused look on her face. I know. Didn't make any fucking sense to me, either Ben went on. She thinks we can't be together anymore now that other people have found out about us. And her brilliant solution is for me to date you instead because that way you're not left out anymore and no one will care because we're not really related. Lucy's eyes went wide, and she began to look very concerned. Oh my god. I'm, I'm so sorry. I never meant to. It's not your fault Ben insisted. Lucy took a deep breath. Are you mad at her? Yes. A bit Ben said. I don't even care that much about her hitting me, to be honest. I just don't get why she thinks we have to break up now. So you want to stay with her? Yes. Of course. That's what this whole thing was about. And she wants to, too. I know she does. Things are just kind of, confusing right now. And whichever way you look at it, my feelings for the both of you is at least partially responsible for that confusion Lucy said, as if she were defending her right to blame herself. If Gwen didn't think I was feeling left out, she never would've. Will you stop doing that? Ben snapped. Jesus, Lucy. Not everything's your fault, okay? It's like you're not even trying to be happy. You always put so much energy into me and Gwen, and now you're trying to take the fall for us when we have a fight. Lucy stared at him, eyes wide. Ben's face softened. He'd never seen her so thoroughly speechless, and he got the feeling he'd said more than he should have. Sorry. It's okay Lucy said quietly. You have a point. There was a pause as neither of them seemed to know where the conversation should go from there. Do you want me to stay out of it? Lucy asked finally. It's not that I don't appreciate you wanting to help Ben said. I just think you've done enough for us. Me and Gwen will work this out. We always do. Lucy smiled. That's true. I love that about you guys. There was another moment of silence. You're very lucky to have each other, you know. Ben nodded. I know. Lucy seemed like she had more to say, but after a moment, she nodded acceptingly. All right then she said. I'll leave Gwen in your capable hands. How did it end up like this? Despite having told Ben that she would leave it in his hands, she couldn't stop herself from worrying about them still. Ben seemed like he'd gotten the push he needed to patch things up with Gwen, but Lucy wasn't confident all the problems they were having now could be solved completely without simply re-emerging somewhere down the line. I just wanted to make them happy. Lucy thought she'd done that. It had taken her three and a half years, but she'd finally gotten them together. And yet, in only a matter of months, it looked like the whole thing was falling apart. No matter what Ben told her, she still blamed herself. If only I could stop. Her being in love with them was a problem, 
whether they admitted it or not. She didn't want to do anything that would get in the way of their relationship, but she just couldn't help herself. However, as she wallowed in her own self-loathing, Ben's words came back to her. It's like you're not even trying to be happy. You always put so much energy into me and Gwen, and now you're trying to take the fall for us when we have a fight. The more she thought about it, the more she realized how right he was. She did things like that all the time. She'd made their happiness into her burden, and she hadn't thought about her own happiness at all. Before, she would have thought that was a good thing. She wanted to be selfless. She wanted to make others happy. When she did, it made her happy. But here she was, lying on her bed, mentally torturing herself over what had happened. It was a miserable experience. Rolling onto her side and curling up into a ball, Lucy began softly weeping. This isn't what I wanted. There was a knock on her door. Lucy. She heard Joel call from outside. She flinched, but didn't answer him. He knocked again, this time opening the door a moment after he did so. Lucy, are you all right? He asked. Lucy had been lying in the dark, so Joel flicked the lights on. Still she didn't move, continuing to lie there with her back to him. Joel walked over and sat down on the edge of the bed. Lucy, you wanna tell me what's the matter? I guess pretending to be asleep won't work. Tears in her eyes, Lucy rolled over slowly and turned her head to face Joel. Her face distorted into a miserable expression and she lunged forward, burying her face in Joel's lap. She started crying again. Loud, wailing sobs that came out slightly muffled. Hey, 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 S-H-H-H-H, S-H-H-H-H, Joel said, lightly stroking her head. It's all right, it's all right, everything's gonna be fine, he assured her. Having had Joel as a guardian for several years at this point, Lucy was a little more comfortable crying in front of him than she was in front of most others. By now, he must have learned that she cried a lot for someone who smiled so much, but this must have been even worse than what he'd come to expect. After a few minutes, the crying stopped. Do you wanna talk about it? Joel offered. Lucy lifted her face out of Joel's lap, nodding slightly as she tilted her head up at him. Rolling over, she adjusted herself so she could sit up next to him on the bed, hanging her head sadly. I have a problem. And what's the problem? Lucy took a few deep breaths. Some of my, friends, there, um, there are a couple Lucy said. But I, I guess I have feelings for them too. I didn't want them to know, but they found out. And, and, and I think that's part of why they're fighting right now. Joel nodded understandingly. I can see that happening. Kids your age can get jealous. I don't even think it's that, it's just, I don't know. I don't know what I can do. I wanna help them so bad. Joel placed a hand on Lucy's shoulder. You've always cared a lot about others. That's one of your best features, I say. Thank you Lucy said unenthusiastically. But too much of that can be bad Joel said. Lucy sighed. So I've been hearing. It's true. I've seen you time and time again obsess over someone else's happiness so much that you completely neglect your own. And you deserve to be happy too. You know Joel told her. But how do I do that? Lucy asked. That's something everyone has to figure out for themselves Joel said. But if it's love you're thinking about, I'd say you need to find someone else who you can love the way those friends of yours love each other. Let them go, so everyone can be happy. I'm not saying you should cut them out of your life or anything but maybe spend some time apart. 
maybe over the summer. Meet some new people. Give them a chance to work out their issues, and give yourself a chance to focus on your own. Joel's words gave Lucy a sudden realization. The summer she said, quickly sitting up straight, eyes opening wide. That was it. That was what she needed to do. You're right. She told Joel. That's it. The summer. Joel furrowed his brow, clearly not understanding Lucy's sudden change in demeanor. However, he smiled at her enthusiasm. There you go. Feel any better? He asked. Yes. Lucy said. Yes, I think, I think I'll be all right. All right, then Joel said, standing up. Now, why don't you get a good night's sleep? I'm sure everything will work out just fine between you and your friends. Thanks, the Lucy started to say as Joel was leaving her room. Thanks, Joel she corrected herself. Embarrassed, she quickly lied down and rolled over, facing away from him. There was a pause, then a slight chuckle before the lights were turned off. Good night, sweetheart. Gwen was a bit worried when Lucy summoned her. The text she received simply said to come meet her and where. When Gwen sent a text back asking what it was about, Lucy's only reply was just come. Please. It's important. So, as Gwen walked through the woods, she imagined what Lucy was trying to do. Her text said she wanted to meet her in the field where she'd confessed to Ben. There were only a few reasons Lucy would choose that specific place. The most obvious explanation was that Lucy wanted to bring her and Ben back together to reconcile. The other possibility she considered was that Lucy still had feelings for her and was going to try to ask her out. Gwen wasn't sure what the logistics of that would entail, but she never claimed to understand the way Lucy's mind worked. It was dark when Gwen stepped out of the woods, but the moon provided plenty of light in the clear night sky. She could see Lucy standing out in the middle of the field, facing away from her. Lucy! Gwen called out. Lucy turned around. She gave Gwen a gentle wave, beckoning her over. It was clear she wasn't in one of her energetic moves. Her face was solemn and she said nothing as Gwen approached her. Lucy, what's going on? Gwen asked. Lucy seemed unfocused, and it took her a moment to reply. Gwen got the feeling she was choosing her words very carefully, or she was trying to remember what she had planned to say. Gwen was no stranger to that. Let's wait until Ben is here. I need to say this to both of you Lucy said. Gwen winced. Lucy, I know Ben and I aren't on the best of terms right now, but please, you don't have to do this for us. We'll figure this out. Lucy smiled weakly. I know. Just wait. Gwen was a bit confused, but without anything else to say until Ben got there, they both just stood around and waited for the next few minutes. Lucy still seemed like she was reciting a prepared speech in her head. Gwen felt awkward. Ben would be here any second, and she hadn't spoken to him at all recently. Will he still be mad at me? Some rustling coming from behind her caught her attention. She and Lucy both turned and saw Ben making his way towards them. No one said a word. Gwen figured Ben knew about as much as she did right now. Once he was closer, he walked right up to them and looked at Lucy questioningly. When he turned to Gwen next, they made eye contact, which made them both quickly avert their gaze. Look, Lucy Ben began. I think I know what you're trying to do here, but I already told you. That's not why we're here Lucy interrupted him. There was a pause. Ben shifted uncomfortably and Gwen curled a strand of her hair with her finger. 
Lucy stood with her eyes closed, then took a very deep breath. I've been doing a lot of thinking recently Lucy began. About my feelings for you two. I know I said it wouldn't be a big deal for me and that I'd be fine, but I'm not. I'm not fine. But more than that, my interest in you two, as well as my constant need to meddle in your relationship, I think I've been using it as a crutch. What? Ben asked. A crutch? Gwen was confused too. Let me explain Lucy said, holding up her hand to request their silence. The day we met, I was instantly interested in you two she admitted. The night before Camille and Joel's wedding, I followed you to your RV and looked through the window. I saw you, Gwen, teaching Ben how to dance. Ah, don't remind me. Ben said, burying his face in his palm. Why you saw us? Gwen asked, her face turning red. Well, what does that have to do with anything? Because there was something else that I saw. I saw something special. There was a bond between you two. A connection. Something deep. Something real. It made me want to nurture it until it blossomed into the love you two now share. And, I wanted what I saw that day. But I can't have it with either of you. What are you talking about? Ben asked. I mean I need to move on Lucy explained. A part of me has still been clinging to the hope that someday I might be able to be with both of you. And I'm sorry for all the trouble that's caused you. I realize now that I met you ten years too late for anything like that to ever happen. Gwen felt terrible. Once again, she hadn't realized the full extent of what Lucy had been going through this whole time. Lucy, we... Let me finish. Please Lucy said. It's okay. It's not anybody's fault. I don't blame you. You two were clearly meant for each other. You just weren't meant for me. So, I need to find someone else. Someone I can have my own special connection with. Someone I can love the way you love each other. So, so here's what's gonna happen. I won't be joining you on your summer trip again this year. Really? You sure? Ben asked, sounding surprised. Yes, I'm sure Lucy insisted. She sniffled a bit, clearly holding back tears at this point. I need to give you guys the alone time you deserve, and I need to give myself some time to sort myself out. Lucy, you don't have to do this Gwen tried to argue still wanting to make everything right with her somehow. Yes, I do Lucy asserted again. I, I think I've tried to do too much for other people lately. This is something I have to do for me. Gwen still didn't feel good about this, but she nodded. I understand she said. I'm sorry, Lucy. If I'd known you felt this way, I, I would have done something to help. It's okay Lucy said. Stepping forward, she lightly kissed Gwen on the cheek, then turned and did the same to Ben. You'll both always be important to me. I could never dream of turning my back on you forever. I just need some time for myself. That's all. Ben reluctantly nodded his understanding as well. Good luck Lucy said to them. I know you two have your problems, but I have faith that you'll work it out on your own. After giving her final word on the matter, she turned and started to walk back towards the woods. Ben and Gwen stood where they were and waved at Lucy as she walked away. Both were too stunned from the confrontation to do anything more at the moment. When they realized they were alone together. They had an awkward moment where neither of them were sure if they should leave or not. Well, I guess we should talk now, huh? Ben asked after a few moments of hesitant staring. I guess so Gwen agreed, deciding this was as good a time as any. I, I'm sorry. 
she thought it best to apologize right off the bat and get it out of the way early. I shouldn't have hit you. And I understand if you don't forgive me. I do forgive you Ben said. Gwen furrowed her brow. Really? Just like that? Yes. Gwen, I... Ben clenched his jaw, then let out a sigh. I'm sorry too. I should have asked you about it when I started thinking about becoming a plumber. I could have been more careful about us getting caught. And I definitely could have done more to let you know I'd never choose Lucy or anyone else over you. Well. There was a moment of silence, but then Gwen started laughing. What? Ben asked, her contagious laughter making him smile too. What's so funny? That was so easy Gwen said. Can you imagine us admitting we were wrong four years ago? Ben laughed. God, no. I guess we've come a long way. Yeah. Gwen smiled contentedly, looking up into the night sky. Do you want to sit down for a bit? Ben suggested. Gwen nodded her head in agreement. Ben sat down and Gwen came over to sit beside him. It reminded her of the night she'd confessed to him, but more so of the night he'd said yes. So, I guess Lucy doesn't need our help Gwen said. Ben nodded. I guess so. She's a smart girl Gwen said. She'll figure everything out on her own just fine. She'll probably find her soulmate by the time we get back from the trip. Ben laughed. Oh, man. I still can't believe she saw us dancing way back then. I know, right? Gwen laughed along with him. After a moment, she looked down at the ground, blushing a little. What did you think of me back then? She asked, suddenly curious now that she'd been reminded of that apparently fateful night. I thought you were a royal pain. So not much has changed, really. Shut up Gwen laughed, playfully shoving Ben. I'm being serious here. Okay, well. Ben took a minute to think. You always had my back. I would have been dead several times over if it weren't for you. And, I was always happier when you were around. Gwen smiled bashfully, pleased with his answer. Did you, already like me back then? Ben asked. Gwen blushed even more deeply. I, I don't even know, really. I knew I wanted to be on better terms with you, but I kept screwing it up. You were my best friend. I just, wanted to be with you. Ben put his arm around her, and she leaned into him. Summer is coming Ben said. You and I can be together all the time, for three whole months. Gwen chuckled. Except when Grandpa is around. Ben laughed. Yeah, we definitely gotta be careful with him. I don't think his heart can handle a surprise like this. They sat together like that for a while, staring up into the starry night sky and enjoying each other's company. However, Gwen still had one thing left on her mind. Hey Gwen spoke. Yeah. One of these days, we are gonna get caught, you know. Ben nodded, but said nothing. Not by someone like Lucy. Not by someone like Julie, or Emily. No matter what we do, our parents, or Max, or somebody else will find out. And they're not gonna be happy. It doesn't matter. Of course it matters. No it doesn't Ben insisted. Yes, we're gonna get caught eventually. Yes, it's gonna suck. But none of that matters because nothing could be worse than being apart from you. Gwen was stunned. That was one of the most romantic things he'd ever said to her, and she realized he was right. Whatever doubts she'd still had about their relationship up to that point vanished entirely. They were meant to be together, 
and nothing was ever going to change that. Hey Ben. Yeah. You know the expression kiss and make up. Yeah. We've already made up. The two of them smiled at each other, moving their faces closer to do as Gwen suggested. I love you. Let's see. I'm probably gonna need this, and this. Ben said out loud to himself. It was the night before the summer trip, and Gwen had come over to his house to help him pack. He'd insisted that he would have everything ready to go before he left for the last day of school tomorrow morning, but Gwen knew how much he loved to procrastinate. This place is a mess she said, pushing through a pile of junk that spilled out of Ben's closet. Okay, Mom Ben said, shoving some unfolded clothes into a bag. As Gwen shoveled crumpled up papers into Ben's waste basket, she found some toys underneath the junk pile. What's this? She asked, lifting up what appeared to be a forearms action figure. Home. Ben asked, turning around to see what Gwen was talking about. Oh yeah. I got that at Planetary Studios back when they were making that crappy cartoon about my aliens. Remember. Remember that whole thing. Gwen laughed. That super cheesy kids show. Oh yeah, that was terrible. Heck, you probably could have sued them over this. She said, shoving the toy in Ben's face. Ben snatched it out of her hands, laughing as he did. Staring at the toy, he leaned back against the side of his bed. His smile started to fade. Guess they won't be making shows about my aliens anymore. Out of the corner of his eye, Ben saw Gwen sit down on the floor beside him. He glanced at her and saw she was looking at him apologetically. It's okay he said, dropping the toy to the floor. Without saying anything, she grabbed his left arm and lifted it up, then rubbed his wrist where the Omnitrix used to be. The skin was still slightly discolored, and it would likely be that way from then on. Still looks a bit weird, huh? Ben commented. To me, this mark will always remind me of just how much you were willing to sacrifice for me Gwen said quietly. Ben was caught off guard. He hadn't realized she thought of it that way. Well, I didn't really have a choice he said not completely willing to accept that much praise. Yes you did Gwen said. You could have just fought him. It would have put our lives at risk, but you would have been able to keep it if you won. But you chose to give it up instead. You gave up your most precious belonging, for me. Thank you. Ben's face felt hot. At that moment, Gwen's feelings for him were quite clear and it was hard to think of the right thing to say to let her know how he felt. Lifting his arm, he twisted and turned it, opening and closing his hand while he stared at his wrist. I've never regretted it he said. Gwen reached over and clasped his hand in hers. Everything's gonna be different now she said. What do you mean? Ben asked. I mean everything. Our lives. Our summer, especially. You can't turn into aliens anymore. I'm so out of practice with magic, I can barely even feel my aura anymore. You think we'll even have any crazy adventures this time? Ben chuckled. Weird stuff always happens to us. I'm sure we'll find a way to deal with it, even if it just means using Grandpa's high-tech toys instead. Gwen frowned a little. Well, it's nice to know we're not completely defenseless if anything were to happen this summer. Ben could tell what Gwen was thinking. The idea of risking their lives again still didn't sit well with her. Don't worry. I won't go seeking out trouble. It's like you said. This trip isn't about being heroes. It's about us. Being together. Gwen's smile came back, but she closed her eyes.
After a moment, Ben saw tears streaming down her face. What's wrong? He asked, panicking a little. Gwen shook her head. I just, I've just wanted this for so long. You and me. Together. No crime fighting, no danger, no risk of losing you forever. Just, us. Ben leaned over and planted a kiss on her lips. It caught Gwen by surprise, but she kissed him back. I'm sorry I didn't realize that sooner Ben said. I guess I've never been great at knowing what you want. You sure haven't, Doofus Gwen said, smirking at him playfully. Like you're any better, Dweeb Ben said before kissing her again. Ben. Gwen. Ben's mother called from downstairs. Startled, the two of them panicked, tumbling to the ground as they scrambled to get away from each other. Dinner's ready. There was a pause as Ben and Gwen realized they hadn't actually been caught. Okay, Mom. Ben called back. The sound of their heavy breathing filled the room. That had been almost as scary as their actual close calls. We're gonna, we're gonna have to lay down some ground rules this summer, I think Gwen said, standing up on wobbly knees. Yeah. Yeah, definitely Ben agreed, also getting up. We don't want Grandpa walking in on us like that. Gwen came up to him and took him by the hands. I guess our summer trip will still have some excitement after all she said, somewhat suggestively. Ben laughed, turning a little red. I like the way you think. Lucy and her surrogate parents arrived at Gwen's house a few minutes before Ben and Gwen were scheduled to leave for their trip with Maximum. Even though Lucy had decided a few days earlier that she'd be staying home for the summer rather than going with them, she still wanted to be there to see them off. Joel and Camille had been pretty surprised by Lucy's decision but they'd accepted it. She figured they were glad she'd be staying home anyway, since being separated for a whole summer again might bring back some bad memories for all of them. Even though Lucy was relieved, she was still worried about something. She'd decided not to go on the summer trip with Ben and Gwen right after Joel advised her to give the couple she liked some space for a while. From that, he might have been able to figure out that the couple she was talking about was actually Ben and Gwen. Joel and Camille definitely seemed like they knew more they than were letting on, but if they'd figured it out, they weren't doing anything about it as far as Lucy could tell. I better start preparing a story I can spin for them if they ever ask about it. Despite it being her idea, Lucy was still having trouble with the situation. She held up pretty well on the short car ride over to Gwen's house, but as soon as she got out of the car and saw Ben and Gwen loading their stuff into their grandfather's RV, she had to close her eyes and tell herself to keep it together. Putting on her bravest smile, she walked across the lawn towards them. Gwen. Ben. She called out, giving them a friendly wave. Ben and Gwen heard her giving each other a brief glance before waving back at her. Need any help packing? Lucy offered once she got closer. No, that was the last of it Ben said. Okay Lucy said. She wanted to say something to them privately, so she looked around to check if anyone else was close by. Joel and Camille had gone inside to talk with the other adults. They were alone outside for the moment. You guys, have a plan? She asked quietly. Ben and Gwen nodded. Don't worry. We agreed not to do anything while Grandpa is around, unless we know for sure he's asleep, Gwen said. We're getting pretty sick of these close calls, Ben said. Lucy nodded. Good. Good. Gwen stared at her almost pityingly for a moment. You know, Lucy, if you've changed your mind, it's not too late to come with us Gwen offered with sincerity. Lucy held up her hand. 
no, no. I've made up my mind. This is something I have to do, she declared. She took a few deep breaths, trying to hide the fact that she was currently fighting back tears. This was her last chance to tell them anything face to face for three months. Anything I gotta say, I gotta say it now. Before either of them had a chance to react, she pulled them into a group hug and gave them each a kiss on the cheek. I love you. Both of you. And you'll always be special to me. So just promise me you'll do your best to be happy. After stepping back from the hug, Ben and Gwen glanced at each other and nodded. I promise they said in unison. Good. Lucy flashed them a genuine smile, despite being teary-eyed. Then I'll do my best too. Across the lawn, the door to Gwen's house opened suddenly. The three of them stiffened for a second, as if they were about to be caught doing something they shouldn't, but they quickly recovered and turned towards the house where the adults were laughing amongst themselves as they poured out through the doorway. Ah, Lucy. Max said when he spotted her. I'm real sorry to hear you won't be joining us this summer. Are you sure we can't convince you to change your mind? He asked, friendly as ever. Lucy gave him a weak smile. I'm sorry, Uncle Maximum. I just can't make it this year, she said. But I hope you all have a safe trip. Why thank you, young lady. Oh well. I hope you will be able to join us next year. Max turned to Ben and Gwen. Well, is everyone else ready? Yep, Ben said. Gwen nodded, glancing uneasily at Lucy. All right, then. Max turned back to the parents and began handing out goodbyes. Ben and Gwen went down the line to say goodbye to everyone as well. When it was Gwen and Lucy's turn, they stood facing each other for a moment before they tightly embraced. Goodbye. Gwen Lucy said. I hope you make a lot of good memories this summer. Goodbye, Lucy Gwen said. Then she leaned in to whisper in her ear. You'll find someone. I know you will. Lucy pulled back from the hug and nodded, giving Gwen a grateful smile. Next it was Ben's turn, and Lucy gave him the same great, big hug. Goodbye, Ben. Try not to have all the fun without me. Bye, Lucy Ben said. Just like Gwen had done, he leaned in to whisper something in her ear. Any guy would be lucky to have you. Good luck. Lucy was touched by that as well. Thank you she said as they separated. Despite the warm feelings that filled her as she hugged her favorite people in the world. Lucy's heart still sank as she watched them climb into the rust bucket and drive off. Almost in a daze, she walked a few steps into the middle of the lawn and waved at them. She continued waving even after they'd disappeared around the corner. Lucy felt hands on her shoulders. Joel and Camille had appeared at her sides. They'll be back Joel reminded her. And they'll still be your friends Camille said. Yeah. Lucy stopped waving and let her hand drop to her side. Come on, sweetheart. Camille bent down a little so her eyes could meet Lucy's. Let's go home. Lucy nodded and followed Camille and Joel back to the car. With every step, images of Ben and Gwen seemed to flash before her mind's eye. Memories of the time they'd spent together. The wedding. Christmas. The summer. Bellwood. It was hard to tell herself that she'd made the right choice, but she knew those memories would always be there. Before long, Ben and Gwen would be back, and there would be new memories to be made. As Camille's car drove off with Lucy in the back seat, she pulled out the locket hanging from her necklace and opened it up to stare at the picture inside. The image of herself with her two favorite people in the world stared back at her. If only I'd met you ten years earlier. 
She desperately wished there was a way for her to be with them, but she knew there wasn't. Not in this lifetime. There just wasn't room for her in their relationship. The way things were now, Ben and Gwen were better off without her making things even more complicated for them. They had a long, challenging road ahead of them, but they'd gotten a handle on how to navigate it. The only thing left was for Lucy to move on, too. Closing the locket, Lucy clutched it tightly in her hand and held it close to her heart. Good luck. Tilda the end Tilda. And that the ending of this part everyone. Hope you like the video. Like share and subscribe the channel and. Also tell me your recommendation in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.